Is it an irrelevant question? How many children have you adopted? How many have you adopted? Is it in the Bible? No. There are some really bad arguments for abortion out there. Today, I respond. These children? Because how many have you adopted, though? How many have you adopted, though? How many have you adopted? Is it an irrelevant question? How many children have you adopted? How many have you adopted? None? I'm going to guess none. Oh, well. You're okay. The answer is not to murder all No, the instead children. the answer is to put them into a foster care system to give this one or make this woman live in poverty for the rest of her life. Pro-choice folks like to use this as kind of like a gotcha question. How many have you adopted? I got you. I got you. Abortion's not wrong because you're not going to adopt them anyway. So who cares? It's almost like this argumentation flows from, and it does flow from this idea that uh, it would better that the children were aborted than grow up in a tough situation in foster care. Like it's kind of a sick and twisted idea. People often apply this to children with Down syndrome too. Well, it's better that they were aborted because if they're born, they're going to have a very tough life. It's like when these same people venture out to find those that are suffering and in pain to put them out of their misery. Is that merciful? Ultimately, the crux of the issue is that they are taking authority into their own hands. They think they have the authority other whether somebody lives or dies and they can make that value judgment based on, oh, well, they might experience pain in their life or they might experience suffering in their life to this degree so it's worth it to kill them in the womb. It's like, wait, what? You don't get to make that decision. Look, I can't testify to this personally, but I have many friends online that grew up in the foster care system. If you ask them, hey, would you have preferred to go through the suffering and pain that you have went through, or were you, would you prefer just to be aborted in the womb? To them, it's an easy answer. Abortion is not done out of mercy and love. It's done out of a desire for convenience for ourselves and worship of self. Did you say the Bible is a pro-life book? Of course. Of course. And then uh, what do you say to the people out there who say, well, you know what? God killed everybody on earth. He, he killed everybody except for Noah and a bunch of farm animals. That's not very pro-life. No, uh, it doesn't sound like it. I've heard this question many times. How could God send a flood and kill all those people if he is truly pro-life? During the time of Noah, God saw that the world was wicked, that they had rebelled against their creator and were giving themselves up to all sorts of perversion. They also participated in child sacrifice and God saw fit to administer the flood as a form of justice. It's not that God doesn't value or regard human life. It's that he regards human life as so valuable that those who were guilty of shedding innocent blood and acts of wickedness deserved death. Okay, so to us, that might seem a little extreme. It's like, okay, well, chill, God, like, why are you going so intense here? But we need to understand God's holiness. That's the thing we don't understand. We think of it from our perspective and we're like, well, maybe that wasn't so bad or maybe that was a little extreme. But when we understand it from how holy and good God is, even the smallest offense is an infinite offense against God. So now you can understand the fact that they were literally sacrificing little babies and participating all sorts of sinful behavior, God was like, well, it's time. I got to administer my judgment. But notice God also demonstrates his mercy by providing a way through the ark that they could escape that judgment. And he also provides a way that we can escape God's coming judgment by trusting in Jesus. People like to think of God as one dimensional, like he only can have one characteristic, but we need to understand he is pro-life, he is pro-justice, and he is anti-wickedness. While we might be more comfortable with a God that resembles a character from a children's cartoon, we need to understand that God is serious about holiness, truth, and justice. Is God opposed to abortion? There's no ban on abortion in Islam. There is no ban on abortion at any point, for any reason, by any method. All right, okay. In Judaism, mm -hmm. abortion is permitted, and where the pregnant person's life is at stake, it's required, because the health and well-being of the pregnant person comes first. Okay. Let's talk about this for a second, because often the accusation is thrown out there. Oh, so you want women to die? What about women that need to have an abortion in order to live? Well, let's talk about one of the instances that this is often the case, or it's supposedly the case, is an ectopic pregnancy. Now, I'm not a, I, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to get into all the science here. But based on my reading, this has never been understood as an abortion. It's a tragic situation, and we should give grace to those that are going through it. The problem is, is that in other situations, there's a lot of speculation 
population. And there's a prediction that this pregnancy could be harmful to the mother. So they go forward with the abortion. This is my philosophy and I think this reflects biblical truth. Goodness preserves life even when it is unlikely. But abortion gives way to the preemptive destruction of human life. So yes, there are challenging situations where a lot of discernment and counsel is necessary. And I feel for those families that are going through that. But at the same time, if you're in an argument, people will always go to the most extreme things to try to justify abortion because they know they can't defend it otherwise. Jamie. Mm -hmm. A little more complicated. <laughs> Bad news. Well, let's bear in mind that what I'm about to say is a teaching created by men who are ostensibly celibate, mm -hmm. who have no inroads or connection to the lives of women because they do not have wives, they do not have daughters. Great start. Yeah. And the Catholic Church teaches that in almost every circumstance, abortion is murder. Is it in the Bible? No. <laughs> Can you believe that flat out just denial? Like she's like, no, there's no verses about abortion whatsoever. The Bible doesn't mention anything about that. It's like, are you sure? Are you sure? Okay, so just to clarify, I'm not Catholic, but I think there's good things that we can take away from this uh, discussion here about whether the Bible says something about abortion. I got some verses for you and that might uh, enlighten this lady about what the Bible actually says. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I anointed you as a prophet to the nations. Psalm 139, for you created my inmost beings. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know them full well. How beautiful is that? I love the imagery of God knitting us together in our mother's womb. God cares for the most vulnerable among us, which are the little babies in the womb. I know if you're watching this video as a pro-life person, it can be really discouraging out there. It can seem hopeless at times, but I want you to know that more and more God is opening people's eyes to see the value of human life and to see him as he truly is in developing a relationship with him and through that a desire to defend those created in his image. All hope is not lost, friends. God wins in the end. If you enjoy this kind of content and want to support my mission of helping people follow Jesus daily, I encourage you to join our Patreon in the link down below. We have all sorts of fun stuff on there and it would be a humongous blessing. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. God bless.